Hi everyone, welcome to Perspective Podcast. Uh, we're the design podcast. We're going to talk about all things student design related, and today we're joined by Sam. Uh, my name's Molly. I'm Preston. And I'm Sam. <laughs> and so we've just had a lecture from Sam. He's come here to NTU and talked all about social media and how we use that for designers. And we really wanted to elaborate on that and go further into sort of how it can be used for good. We talked a bit about how it has negatives. It can be quite superficial possibly, but yeah, we want to know your thoughts on how you drive social media for good for your work. Yeah, that's a great question because, you know, I said in the, in the lecture that social media gets a bad rap where Instagram is this fake elevated reality of you know everyone's on holiday posting sunny pictures um and their best design work uh whereas actually what instagram can be and what it is for me is like this diary of my progress for the past well I'm showing my age but i started in 2016 um so all of a sudden i have this huge backlog of progress that i've done and it's almost become like this personal diary um, that as I scroll through my own feed, it's like this this progression bar. So for me, I I I post to Instagram um, to to share something that I'm proud of, and to um, engage with people who might be might be interested in that. Now in the in the lecture, I gave an example of like uh, in the past when maybe these elaborate high detail, high fidelity sketches that you might see online, you know, there was a real big issue on Instagram where people would be sharing these, you know, artworks, these high fidelity artworks saying, oh, just you know, an afternoon sketch just because I can, you know, and like um, it really gave the wrong impression about what design is. Design is not that. That was, that, that was creating like an art piece in the style of an in industrial designer. Um, and even in the talk, I mentioned about tips and tricks that I used to use to potentially fake some of those. Um, but what that's meant is where I would uh, get the same end result in a fraction of the time and I would post it and, and um, everybody's happy. People get to see a post. I get to get, you know, post something, you know, and it's, it's kind of like a harmless um, uh, fake image. Uh, that was the impression at the time. That was the goal at the time. However, looking back on that, when you're when so many designers are posting these high elaborate sketches, for me, I imagine that might put people off from either Definitely, posting yeah, to Instagram yeah. or, you know, and, and you guys as students, you might see some of those sketches and think, oh man, like yeah, it yeah, needs yeah. to be that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do think sometimes you see stuff online and it's very daunting and you're like, oh, you've got to have these really glossy renders. Mm. You've got to get your shadows like perfect and you've got to have all your materials like up to point. But in reality, it's never like that. You know, you're meant to make mistakes. Design's all about making mistakes. Okay. That's how you make a better product, right? And I'm mm -hmm. sure you've seen it as like your career has progressed. You know, you go through the iterations where things don't work, right? So why is that not worked? And, you know, you developed it more and more. Um, do you, do you kind of think there's a, a facade nowadays and do you think it's getting better? Do you think it's getting worse? Do you think, you know, there's a, a trend of, of design? Yeah, I think we, we may, we might've hit like peak facade in like 2018. I imagine, I think, and, and 2019 and particularly since the pandemic, we, we, we we're all craving this like real, uh, real pose and real connection. Um, and I feel like now we're at the other side where uh, we can talk candidly about um, it's it's okay to trace images or if, you know, I gave an example in the lecture where I said um, at, at work, if I'm going to redesign, if I'm going to design a new watch, I'm not going to set up a five hour sketch where I'm looking at like a chrome detail strap and it's like, how is the light interacting with with, with all the chrome elements? I'm not going to set that up as a sketch. I'm going to take a picture of a watch. I'm going to trace over it and change the details and get it to a point where it's a new design. And it's not, you know, reinventing the wheel. It's about iteration on, on what's come before. Um, and I think people are more open to that now to see that process from scratch. Um, and I think there's a big avenue while I'm maybe posting less online and, and there's, there's opportunity for more designers to come in and post more. Uh, I think that's like the next big step is we can get really real with it uh, and share mm -hmm. that process. Uh, and, you know, if you learn a new skill, post it. 
Like, don't polish it further. Just say, hey, I just learned how to do this in, in SolidWorks or, or, or in Keyshot or something. And that one little skill could be like your post mm -hmm. and it can be as simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think it's, it's so sort of hard. I feel like someone needs to take the first step almost to show this is what I look like at the beginning. It's so easy. Like I think we said in the lecture at Behance, you can just click and see 50 other people who've done it also amazing renders. And it's so hard to know who's got what experience, like who's been training on what software for so long that I think it almost needs to be like, there's, we were talking about trends in like Instagram, social media, like stories of Instagram as well. They're really like a lot bigger than posts now, I'd say. Mm. But like, who's going to take that first step to post something that's not as great possibly mm. as someone else's? Yeah. To show that, yeah, this is a new, new Instagram. Definitely. I think not just in the design world, we've got to a stage now where I think it really, it got really bad probably during the pandemic where everyone mm. was like editing their pictures, mm. especially like Instagram celebrities and so on. That's but so much time to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it is come across into, you know, the design world a little bit, but now there is more like digital sketching, like Procreate, like Sketchbook Pro. But do you think that we're losing that physical skill essentially of just mm. being rough and ready, you know, doing your, your napkin sketches, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Um, and we're being too much of a perfectionist a little bit now. Uh, potentially online, yes. Uh, in my day job at work, uh, I work at Layer Design. We still have like some Muji notebooks and it's just Biro and the notebook and we're just sketching through and um, they are awful. But I can just slide that sheet of paper across to someone else and be like, oh, I thought it could be like this, this and this. And they're like, absolutely, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, none of those sketches are ever being shown to anyone else. They're <laughs> awful. Uh, but even at work, there's someone who, um, he's, a, he's a furniture designer, and he sketches on paper with crayons. Right. And colored crayons, and that's his thing. He scan them in, and he might go over those uh, lines with like an illustrator uh, pen line, maybe. Um, but his thing is, is, is colored crayons. Um, uh, and whereas I prefer to use something like procreate that's where that's like my wheelhouse that's i enjoy using that i enjoy the undo button um but i think there is still a space in the industrial design world where you where you there's that crossover between physical and and, and, and procreate is the next step above that um with with a lot of projects that we do we tend to do um cad work and SolidWorks. And we'll jump straight into it in the in the concept stage and we'll show the clients like a, a fairly high fidelity model rendered in keyshot however there's a project that i'm working on right now where the, the 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 project is just too complex to say we need to cad four or five of these ideas right so we're doing orthographic views um in procreate uh line drawing color highlights and shadows and texture yep, and we're yep. using orthographic 2D views to say these are like the design routes. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly been like a nice change to get back into that. I'm like, mm. oh yeah, we used to sketch. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I think it's, it's still definitely worth learning those, those skills. Yeah. Um, um, so we were, we were talking in one yeah, of the yeah. previous podcasts about using different elements of design, you know, your physical, your digital, and then going above and beyond but using it as part of your workflow. Now, do you find there's a bit of a, a gap between those that are more experienced designers and the junior designers, those that are coming through like internships and so on, are just sticking with one way. Mm. And then those that are more experienced being like, all right, now I've seen this come through through my generation. I'm gonna use what I know and now implement a little bit more. Do you think there is a bit of a, a gap going or do you think, yeah, everyone is sort of learning with the times, I guess? Yeah, I think so. I think when with interns and, and junior designers at work, it's like, I will now design in Illustrator for two days. And they go, right, this is the time for Illustrator for two days. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, I will now design in SolidWorks for three days. And the, you know, they do that. And it's very segmented. And each, you know, sort of what, while you're learning each of those different skills, Illustrator, Procreate, SolidWorks, Keyshot, you keep them separate. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then at the end, you jump into Keyshot and, and it goes. I think when you become more fluent in those, and I use the word fluent because you can sort of know a program, but being fluent in that program is like you don't even need to think mm -hmm. uh, to use it. It just happens. And when you come, become fluent in a program, I will more often than not, I'll be doing some CAD, you know, in whatever program, and then throw it into Keyshot, 
How does that look? Where's the light coming from? What CMF is here? Oh, that's interesting. Now let me just take those findings and put it back into SolidWorks. So actually Keyshot becomes a, an integral program to, re to, um, to design in and iterate in. Um, and then you just hopping between all different softwares. Uh, I, I think that comes with time. And then obviously when you're a student, it's like very segmented of like, this is now the time I will do some CAD. Yeah, yeah. So like essentially just finding what works best for you and kind mm. of manipulating that's your design style essentially. Because yeah. um, now we're looking into sort of the future of design, things like gravity sketch, you know, immersing yourself into that virtual reality. And so far there isn't really one software that is your kind of, does everything, it's not your, your go-to. Um, but then like now there is gravity sketch where you can immerse yourself into that environment. You can sketch, you can iterate, you can sit inside of the product, mm. for example. Um, and now it's looking at like future technologies and things. So within your design process, have you like integrated more modern things? Are there things that you guys have seen from an industry side of, of a point of view that are helping you out developing your design process a lot more to get a better end quality product? Yeah, we actually spoke... Um, or oh, I spoke with Gravity Sketch a long time ago about setting us up with some, some headsets. Um, I don't think for our workflow, uh, I think it would be great, like you said, for some larger scale things. You can see it in a space, you can sit in it, you know, whatever. You, you might be able to, to do that. But when we're doing a lot of like handheld designs, like handheld physical objects at work or like wearables that, you know, I, I wonder at the comp I think in gravity sketch you can get some really complex shapes really quickly mm -hmm. you know push pull some some loops and um, the nodes that you can pull around um, which has its place I, I'm sure f f for me um, I don't know if my design style quite fits that yet and also you know for me personally my eyesight is not great no. and then putting a <laughs> VR headset on um, I don't know. I struggle with that as a barrier. Maybe mm -hmm. when maybe when the headsets become higher fidelity, uh, I only I only see out of one eye, right? Right. So three D, three D sketching in VR is not my strong point. Right. Um, uh, which is why maybe I enjoy SolidWorks slightly more or or whatever uh, modeling app. Because if I'm looking at this table here, I only see it in two D, and I can see this, and I can see those lines, and that makes sense to me. And then in SolidWorks, when I'm looking at the, the, um, the screen, that's normal to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's yeah, still yeah. flat, but mm. I, that is how I interpret the world anyway. So maybe I'm, I don't know if I'm the best um, ambassador for um, Gravity Sketch. Um, I do know that they brought out like an iPad app. And mm -hmm. I think like I would be, like, I'm, that's more my jam. Oh, yeah. um, but I, I hope that one day when, when, prisms in VR headsets become um, slightly less pixelated or uh, restricted field of view, mm -hmm. then I think that's my time to jump in. So just sort of going on from that, you spoke about in the lecture about being a, a generalist in design. I feel like Gravity Sketch probably and digital sketching fits into that knowing about everything. And how do you feel that, that fits in with, and it's part of your work, but when there's quite a saturated market for design, especially on Instagram, being a generalist, do you feel like cut off at all by not having a certain sector you fit into or where you've done digital sketching? How do you feel that fits into being sort of a generalist mm. in design? Yeah, I think with, particularly with the, you know, the Instagram sketches that I used to do um, were taking existing products and sketching those in my style and, and basically copying those existing products. And you mm. see it in like, when you do fine art at, at, at college or at uni, you're encouraged to replicate an artist's style, right? So in, in, in looking at these objects that I enjoy and then sketching them on paper, I'm kind of learning like, why do I enjoy it? What looks good? Oh, I put this line here, but now it makes it look bad. And actually sketching on, I'm, I'm recreating a, a, an object that already exists, not necessarily redesigning it, but drawing it in my style. I think that helped with like my, my, my form knowledge of like what mm. makes something look good? Why do I enjoy that? Why might someone else enjoy that? Um, and I don't think, I, I think in design, we lose that sense of like 
it's okay when you're starting out to copy someone else, mm -hmm. you know, in the same way that a fine artist will, where they're painting in the style of Monet or doing something or like, you know, that's heavily encouraged so that you understand why that's the case. Um, and yeah, I think in, in industrial design, that's, that, that set me up and helped with, with my career as well, I think. Yeah, I think the great thing about design is so experimental and like you do find what works best for you by just doing things. Mm. <laughs> it's not like when you're at school, you're told, right, you've got to use this, you've got to do it this way and this is the only way and that's it, you're going to get your marks that way. With design, you can really explore what kind of different things are going on and it's really sort of beneficial, like we were saying before, it's good to make the mistakes there mm. and that's what you find works best. Um, yeah, Un mm. university is the best place to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. sure, yeah. uh, it's the safest place no lawsuits are coming your way <laughs> from the clients you know uh if if, if a product doesn't do, doesn't do well on the market now is the time to like just see just like yeah. test all these new right. programs yeah like try everything out and if it doesn't work fine just move on you know yeah um that's the bit that i miss most about uni mm -hmm. where i could try these different techniques or or, or digital sketching or something that um that's not taught you know like you said, there's no there's no right or wrong thing in design. There's no like test where it's like tell us the exact answers A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. We're we're sort of experimenting as we go, and that's the the loose um, part of design that I quite enjoy. So, if you were back in our shoes, you know, back in second year, final year university, what would you change from this point that you know as would benefit you now, or how would you change? Wow. Um, <laughs> Ooh. being client facing would be i know that you do like uh, real life projects and you sort of do a presentation at the end uh but it's it's it, um i think some business management stuff might have helped me we had some business management stuff at, at brunel it was the most driest <laughs> bit I, like i hated that bit mm -hmm. so um yeah i don't know i don't know what the answer is but like there's got to be something that prepares you for like real life for yeah. real life yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would that would go a long way. Is there anything you've kind of experienced at work or during your career and be like, I, I wish I did that at uni, I wish I did more of it while I had the chance? I miss workshops. I miss physical, like a lathe or a, or a drill press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I miss my time in the workshop making stuff. So um, that would be like, that's the one thing where I, walking through here just now, I was like, oh, I wanted to be back yeah. here again. <laughs> So that would be my advice is like savor that bit because not everywhere has a big workshop like that. No, definitely. Now as like sort of final wrap up, what would you say like your, like you finished uni, you've got your career, you're now like midway design, you've been through that. What are your like priorities you'd say as a designer now that have changed that you think these are what I would set myself with to like work? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in a fortunate position now where I'm beginning to, uh, manage others mm -hmm. and um, I'm, I think I'm very lucky where I am at Leia that nobody ever really steps away from doing the design you know mm -hmm. it's 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 hard sometimes in other places where the the more senior people will become like the spreadsheet people and the management people uh, and you sort of like reach this ceiling of of design and and they sort of lose out on that sketching stuff I'm very lucky that I don't think that's going to happen to me at Leia but I am starting to manage a small team or mm -hmm. manage like m people and all of a sudden I'm trying to communicate what I think the design should be and then letting them explore and letting them experiment and I don't think that's something that is taught at uni because obviously that comes with time um, but I think um, some some form of um, man team management or team building something at uni could be mm -hmm. could be good because um, I'm finding that transition quite interesting mm -hmm. Part of which I think uh, YouTube and things like that help me with because yeah, yeah. I'm trying to communicate in a nice way, in a constructive way, how um, in my videos, how someone might learn from that or in my team meetings, how someone might take that on board and, mm -hmm. and use that in the next thing. So I don't know if that answers the question so much, but that's what's stri striking me over these last six months or so is like moving into people management. Yeah, no, definitely. That, that's yeah. really helpful for everyone listening. Yeah, I think like when we're at uni, you kind of you get your brief, unlimited budget, you just yeah. yeah you just find it. a way and you've got to accomplish it and as long mm -hmm. as you've got a nice sort of glossy render and a little prototype it's kind of sweet but in reality 
does that really happen? Maybe, probably not, because you're in a team. And mm -hmm. that's the aspect that we do kind of lose a little bit. Mm -hmm. In stages, yeah, you have it for some projects. Some stages, you know, it's just you. You're doing everything, the research, the ideation, the concept. Mm -hmm. um, but no, it's definitely think that's something that we could in depth. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Thank you so much for coming up today, Sam, up to Nottingham. Um, I know we've really enjoyed it and the lecture this morning was absolutely brilliant. And yeah, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you.